Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Well, hello, people of Australia. I am back with yet another movie review of one of your finest films ever made, truthfully. And the name of that film is, of course, The Castle. This movie stars Michael Catton, who was also in the 2004 film with Paul Hogan called Strange Bedfellows. And this movie follows a family who lives practically on an airport runway. And while they live there in Australia, they are being told that they have to move because the people who own the land, they're trying to knock it down for more expansions and such. And of course, this family, they're not having it. They're technically a Bogan family. And I know when I wear my sleeveless shirt, I always say I'm rocking me Bogan realness. If you want to know anyone who's American out there what a Bogan is, it is the Aussie slang term for a redneck. And you know damn good and well what a redneck is if you're American, so we ain't even going to go there. But digress, this Bogan family, if you will, the king of the castle, Michael Catton, he has a very awesome and very interesting family. They are always coming up with ways to not only remain happy because they are always eminently happy, right down to one of their sons who is in jail, they just exude so much joy and they don't give any fucks about what goes on but when someone tries to threaten their castle that's when things you know take a turn they gotta stick up for where they live of course because no matter how much they're offered they're not giving it up because that's the core value of this film is family and having pride in oneself having good self-esteem and the movie is a very good allegory for that it's something everyone should see regardless of the fact that it is an Australian film. As an American, I watched the film and I definitely got the message like that. And I think anybody else who does will. And it's it's a really good film and it's very funny. It's got endless quotes in it. Oh my gosh. The, the dad, of course, he's always asking how much someone paid for something and saying, oh, they must be dreaming if he thinks it's too much. Of course, whenever they go to Bonnie Doon, that's a very endless quote, too. We're going to Bonnie Doon. And Bonnie Doon is this really cool place that has a nice big lake and it has lots of, here it comes, serenity. And it's just, it's just great. I mean, I really connected with this movie. Is it a little dry in spots? Of course it is. But that doesn't matter because it's still fun. It's not a slam bang hits you over the head kind of an Australian comedy like the works of, you know, Yahoo Serious. But this movie just has what every good film has, and that's a heart. And it's really remarkable because this film was shot in just 11 days on a very, very small budget on 16 millimeter film stock. And they make it really work. You would never think the film was shot in such a low amount of time considering how many sets and places and how grand the story is. They really knew how to make a dollar out of 15 cents with this film. The movie also features a very, very early performance from Eric Bana. He, of course, is probably perhaps most well known for playing the first big screen adaptation of The Hulk from 2003, directed by Ang Lee. And it was interesting seeing him in the film. He was so fresh faced and young and just seeing everybody in this film. It was just so great. And by the way, one more familiar face, the... Uh, sister who's marrying Eric Bana's character. She was that crazy bitch who was part of the uh, ex-friends, if you will, that Muriel had in Muriel's wedding a couple years prior because Muriel's wedding was in 94, the castle was in 97. And apparently this movie was also based on some true events as well, which helps out its cause even more. But if you haven't seen the castle, I urge you to. Any true film buff or someone who just wants a feel-good movie about sticking it to the man, but in, of course, all the best ways and some really hearty laughs. This one's for you. I love this movie. This is probably one of... This is in my top five 
of best films ever made from Australia. Seriously, this is one of the best movies that they've that that country's ever produced. That's ever that's ever come out of that country. You know what I mean? This is a must must see. If anyone's ever wanting to basically get a list of Aussie cinema, Muriel's Wedding, Mad Max, and the Strictly Ballroom. And of course, yeah, the castle is one of them. Now, I haven't seen Strictly Ballroom just yet, but I've heard it is a must, must watch. And that fifth movie, of course, as if I have to name it, it's right behind me. So those are definitely must watching for any person who wants to delve into the world of Aussie cinema. Anyway, you guys, that about wraps up my review for The Castle. What's its grade? Pfft, too easy. There's no even reason to name. Of course it gets an A+. It's phenomenal. Definitely check it out. It's available on many streaming platforms, and it is available to purchase as well. You guys take care, be well, and I'll see you at the movies. Talk to you guys soon. See you later.